14, our chapter 14. And you will all be probably familiar with this story, I'm sure. A lot of times I do use this at Memorial Day because it's ladies recognized for anointing Jesus with oil and said that all down through history they're going to remember that. That she did this. Of course, say they buried him without anointing him with oil. But she'd done it ahead of time. Some say, well, she didn't know all that, but God knows it. God set it all up. God planned it. God plans a lot of things. We think we work it out. I think it's God working it out. He's in control. As a matter of fact, I think your bulletin on the front talks about God's sovereignty, doesn't it? He's omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. We're, we're not any of those things. We can have some of the attributes God has. Not those divine ones, though. We, I don't know everything. Somebody asked me something. I said, well, I'm not God. I don't know. Sometimes it's best to just go ahead and admit you don't know everything. Mm -hmm. If you start thinking you know everything, you're going to get in trouble. Pride cometh before destruction, the haughty spirit before fall. Is that in the Bible or not? It's in Proverbs, isn't it? And the devil, he got proud. What happened to him? And then the devil tempted Adam and Eve, and they got proud and decided they wanted to know everything God knew. And they got into sin, and then now it's carried all the way down to us. But what I want to talk about this morning is giving your best. Giving your best. And so we're going to use these verses in Mark chapter 14. And uh, let's read verse 3. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment and spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? So that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, there's several things here, and I don't want to get into deep stuff, but uh, there's a lot of confusion. Who is this Mary? Now, I'm just going to say it's Mary, you know, Martha's sister and jo uh, Lazarus's uh, sister. But uh, uh, remember that story of, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. What's the text? John 11, 35. What is it? It was John 11, 35, Jesus wept. And uh, when I was at Bible college, there was a guy talking in class to his neighbor, you know, whispering back and forth, and the teacher saw him. And they were studying about the humanity of Christ. And the teacher thought he'd get him in trouble, and he says, give me a verse on the humanity of Christ. And the guy said, John 11, 35, Jesus wept. <laughs> So, so he got out of it. Well, you never know. I used to sit in class and, and the teacher's going around the room and you had to take a question like in English, you know, and answer it or a math class. And I'd count which one was mine because usually I didn't do my homework, so I hadn't done it. <laughs> so I, I had to, well, the, the, one, two, three, one, two. Then I could... Uh, get the answer before they got to me. <laughs> now, you guys wouldn't do something like that, would you? <laughs> you know how Carol did her book reports? <laughs> she didn't read the whole book. She flat. read the flap on the front and back. <laughs> <laughs> now, she gave them the highlights. But anyway, that's <laughs> not got anything to do with what I'm talking about here. Now we're down to verse 4. There was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and having, have been given to the poor and they murmured against her. So they didn't like her wasting a, a year. They say this oil ointment would probably be worth a year's pay. That's a lot. A year's pay. And uh, they're murmuring and complaining because she did this. And verse 6, And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. And then he goes on, he says, verse 7, For ye have the poor with you always, and when, uh, whensoever ye, ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye, uh, but uh, me 
but me, he, he and my pages are separated, have not, not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body for the bearing. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, uh, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of as a memorial of her. And uh, like I say, they debate which Mary it is. I'm just going to say it was Mary and, uh, uh, and Martha, the sisters. And then there, was it their brother Lazarus died? And Jesus didn't come for about four days and he'd been in the grave. He died and they buried him. And Jesus went to the grave and he says, Lazarus, come forth. And he brought him back to life. And then she asked a bunch of questions about that. If you go to John 11, you can read that story. Amen. And I'm not going to go to that, but uh, it kind of, you need to know that for me to tell you, it's to get some of this set up here so you understand. But uh, there's several things I want to talk about. Giving your best. Did she give her best? But the, the great thing was what Jesus said about her. He uh, uh, said, you have done uh, she has done what she could. <clears throat> Are you doing what you can for God? Uh -huh. Well, I can't do what somebody else can do, and you can't do what I can do, but you can do what you can do. Amen. Good. And I shouldn't try to do something I can't do. That will get me in trouble. Amen. That will just frustrate me. You know, I wouldn't try to play the piano. <laughs> you wouldn't want to hear it. Now, I might attempt to sing a special, but you might not want to hear that either. But if I don't have somebody doing that before long, I'm going to try it. Now, I'm warning you. So maybe somebody else ought to step up, right, and do their best for God. If not, I'll try to do my best, but that's not one of my strong suits. And somebody said, well, I don't know if preaching is either, but I'm still doing the best I can. I kind of think I can teach the Bible a little bit. But Jesus, Jesus paid her a great compliment, this Mary of uh, Bethany. Now, uh, if we think about some of this, uh, I want to go back again and read a little bit out of this text. Verse 3, And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper. Now, normally you couldn't be at a leper's house. Mm -hmm. Leper had to go around covering his mouth saying unclean, unclean. He couldn't get around other people. Mm -hmm. And leprosy is a picture of type of sin in the Bible. There wasn't any cure for it at the time. It, it had to be, it, the only cure you could have would be God cure you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true for sin? Yeah. That's right. So, well, I'll be good. I'll do the sacraments. Uh, I'll get baptized. I'll join the church. That'll get me to heaven. No, it won't. That's right. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you say through faith in that not of yourselves, a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. You can't work your way to heaven. But most people are trying. That's what most churches teach. But that's not what the Bible says. What Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, I just recorded it to you. Of course, you can look at it and study it over. But here they're at this leper's house. And... Uh, a lot of people think maybe Jesus healed him from leprosy. Well, I think if he'd healed me from leprosy, I might invite him over to my house for a meal. What do you think? Or, uh, you know, if Jesus saved me, I might invite him over for a meal. Amen. You think? That'd be just as important. I think it'd actually be more important. That's right. But... Goes on, says uh, he was Simon the leper. As he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box. So I believe Mary comes in, anoints him. Uh, one place it says anointed his head, another one said anointed his feet. He probably was anointed, uh, uh, but she didn't understand it all. But she was getting him ready. He was going to die. They weren't going to anoint him before he died, but she was. God set it up. God took care. Of, God takes care of things, doesn't He? Amen. Has God ever helped you? But I think Mary looked over and she sees uh, Lazarus, her brother, and she says, man, he really looks healthy. Remember, he died. And Jesus came and said Lazarus came forth and he came out of the grave and he still had the grave clothes wrapped around him. They said, loose him and let him go free. And they unwrapped the grave clothes. Amen. 
And Lazarus is sitting there and, and Mary's looking across the table at him and says, Boy, you guys have been awful good to me. He brought my brother, my brother back to life. Amen. Yeah, did God ever do anything good for you? All the time. Do you thank him for it? Yeah. Do you think about it? Yeah. And we can look back over our lives at the blessings God's given us. Somebody says, well, what? Well, if you got a job, that's a blessing. Amen. If you got health, is that a blessing? Yes. If you have friends, is that a blessing? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the comment I was looking for. But, uh, well, it's true. <laughs> I, I, I can understand what you're getting at. But she remembered how happy she was when Jesus brought her brother back from to life. And so she wanted to do something for Jesus. So she anoints him with oil. That was a whole year's pay. Equivalent to a year's pay. But you know, Jesus said up there in that verse, she had done what she could do. That's a great compliment. Jesus said about John the Baptist one time, said he's the greatest man born of woman. That's a compliment. Yeah. There was a centurion soldier. Now, that'd be a soldier that was over a hundred men. So he's a ranking soldier, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he had faith, and he was a Gentile. He wasn't even a Jew. And the Lord mentions that. That's a compliment to him. He has greater faith than most all the Jewish people have. And he's a Gentile. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes little kids have more faith than sometimes adults do. Yeah. You tell them something, they just pretty well believe it. But after you get older, people have taken advantage of you here. There it goes back to Nancy's comment. <laughs> and you get to kind of where you keep your guard up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Be best if we didn't have to do that. But life kind of... But young people, they haven't been through a lot of that, so they just trust people. Well, really... Uh, you need to learn something as a Christian. You don't need to worry about it, people a lot. God will take care of a lot of things. Amen. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get even with anybody or keep a lot of things from happening. But God can. That's right. God will take care of a lot of things like that. Somebody tries to take advantage of you. Sometimes God will turn the thing around. Yeah. And sometimes it might take a while. And don't 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 get all tied up in that, caught up in that. Just go on and live your life, mm -hmm. and let God work in your life, and trust God. Mm -hmm. Even if you can't trust everybody that much, but that was a great compliment that he gave uh, to this lady. She just did what she could do. Are you doing what you can do? Could God give you that compliment? Be good if He could, wouldn't it? Somebody says, well, I can't do much. Well, you can be faithful. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, well, I, I can't do much. Well, you can pray. Yeah. Can't you? Even if you couldn't walk or talk or hardly do anything. Somebody says, well, how can you pray if you can't talk? I think the Lord knows the thoughts and intents yeah. of the heart. Yes. Doesn't He? Mm -hmm. So you could just think something and God knows it. Amen. He knows what's going on in here. I'm glad other people don't know everything I think all the time. Because <laughs> I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> but I need to work on my thinking. I'm thinking about doing a sermon about that. Think about what you think. <laughs> you we don't. We don't think about it. Or maybe we think wrong about it. Uh, so we got to think about some of these things. But, you know, why... Why should we serve God? Why, why do, with this woman? Now they're griping and complaining. Uh, after all, you could have sold out and taken care of the poor people. Jesus said, well, I'm not going to be around much longer. He knew he was going to the cross. She was anointing his body for his burial. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he knew that. But there's a lot of people all worried about the poor people, but you don't see them taking money out of their pocket to give to them. That's it. A lot of the politicians, some preachers. Mm -hmm. Not too uh -huh. They're not going to hurt themselves to help somebody else. Yeah, they want you to do it. Yeah, they want, 
Well, isn't that what the politicians want? They don't have any money. The government doesn't have any money. The only government money the government has is your money they get from you in taxes. That's correct. There was supposed to be a temporary tax. That was a long time ago when they set up, and they're never going to take it off. Isn't it the truth? Get you some history books. Of course, you got to be careful because they're changing the history books. I was thinking about the Bible. You know, the Bible never changes, but the science books change all the time. That's true. But yet they teach evolution, but the Bible doesn't teach it. It said God did it in seven days. Six days and rested on the seventh. Amen. So I said, you really believe that? Yeah, because God said so. And God was there and he was an eyewitness and there wasn't any scientist there. That's correct. Wasn't a scientist there. Was there? <laughs> now, uh, if you're talking about true science, they have to see and observe something. How do you know water boils at a certain temperature? Observation. They tested it. That's correct. Now, were they there when God created the heavens and the earth? No. I wasn't. <laughs> Even Moses wasn't, but God told him what to write down in the first Amen. Genesis. That's the way it works. But yet now, and you know, scientists have a few years back, they had us going to freeze to death, now we're going to burn up. That's right. Who knows what it'll be next week? Keep well, the science out. books will keep changing. Yeah. Now, like Manny always says, he likes this. Two plus two is four. They don't change. It doesn't change. There are some absolutely true things. Yes, there is. But there's a lot of people today saying there's no absolutes. Denial. Well, they say there's no absolutes, then that's an absolute. That's right. They're even contradicting themselves. Amen. Isn't that the truth? Jesus is the truth. John 14, 6, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man come to the Father but by me. me. Only way you get to heaven is realizing what Jesus did for you on the cross. How he died to pay for your sins, suffered your hell. And then if you'll trust him, uh, he'll take your sins on himself so you can go to heaven. But you can't work your way to heaven. That's correct. If you could have worked your way to heaven, Jesus could have just stayed in heaven. But no, he came down here because he wanted to help you. And why should we uh, do anything like this lady did for the, uh, Jesus, anointing his feet, anointing his head? Uh, look at uh, second, first, second Corinthians. I wanted to second Corinthians chapter five. Got my marker in the wrong place. Second Corinthians chapter five, and I want to read some verses here. I'm already taking more time than I. I'm trying to speed up the preaching a little bit. And sometimes I ramble around so much and take so much time. I'll probably wear you and me out too. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and go down here to uh, verse uh, 14. 2 Corinthians. I want to get stuck on 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because uh, we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Why, why should you serve God? Because you're working your way to heaven? Or because you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus for what He did for you on the cross? Uh, you know Jesus loves you. Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth His love toward us in the while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say, well, you have to get to be good. Then I'll die for you. He just died for the whole world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Do you have it or don't you? How do you give it? Well, I go to church so many times and they mark it off. And if I get enough marks, I make it. You ever see that in the Bible anywhere? Or if I don't get drunk too many times. Or if I don't lie and steal and cheat, whatever. No, it's you're saved by grace. For the love of Christ constrains us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. We all deserve to die. For the wages of sin is death. You know, if you sin, you deserve to die. That is correct. Now, in our court systems, we've got a mess. They don't, 
They don't exercise capital punishment. That's cruel and inhumane treatment. But yet when a guy goes out here and kills four or five or six people, and then he just sits in jail and you support him the rest of his life. With my tax money. Is that what? Or, you know, we plea bargain. Mm. A lot of people kill somebody and they're out of prison within five years. Yeah. Somebody can get caught with a few drugs and they go to prison longer. Yeah. I mean, it's just our systems. That's but we need to get the Bible and try to have laws like God says. That's what our laws are built on, the Ten Commandments. That's correct. Thou shalt not yeah. steal, mm. covet, bear false witness. People even go to court. People even go to court and perjure themselves. Mm -hmm. I, 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 some people amaze me. They can tell a lie with such a straight face mm -hmm. that they can, you can know it's a lie and they can almost convince you. <laughs> you ever been around anybody like that? That's I have. I've seen people like that. Now I know I'm meddling, but I'm just telling you the truth. Now verse 15, and that he died for all that they which uh, live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Did Jesus die for the world, whole world? Yes, sir. 1 John 2, 2, and He's a propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. 1 John chapter 1, 2, verse 2. I use that because I wear John 3, 16 out. John 3, 17, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn us, but that the world through Him might be saved. saved. See, I don't even need to say these verses. You guys can quote them. How come you probably can quote them? You've heard them said so many times in church after a while they just sink in. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. How'd you know that? <laughs> Edward knew it too. I didn't hear him say it, but I know he knows it. He's he, he he's backslidden, he's back here on the back of <laughs> But yet, if you take his seat, he won't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has a I'm, I'm, I'm just fooling with him now. But <laughs> I appreciate it, Edward. Now, we're, we're still looking at these verses here. And uh, reading down through here, we uh, read verse 15, and that he died for all that God, they uh, which lose should not henceforth... Uh, live unto the, to themselves. We shouldn't live just thinking about ourselves. Right. Did Jesus live just thinking about himself? No. Or did he think about you? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying the world, you, yeah. personally. Yeah. I think he could call Edward by name. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Or Manny, Amen. or Jimmy, or Martin. Mm -hmm. I better throw some ladies in here, I'll get in trouble. That's right. Nancy or Carol. Right. Uh, they'll think I'm prejudiced or something. Yeah. <laughs> what on that white privilege? Mm -hmm. And uh, so then we're reading verse 15, the very last part. He says, and that he died for all that they should, uh, which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who's that talking about? Who should you be living for, self or Jesus? Jesus. Well, why? Because he died for you. Amen. That's pretty good, isn't it? Verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him uh, no more. Well, Jesus died and went back to heaven. But he did come down here and walk around in the flesh, didn't he? Did he... Uh, did he die as a in a human body on the cross or not? Yes, he did. Yeah. Was it a human that came out of the grave? That is correct. But it was God came out of the grave too. Amen. Well, I don't understand that hypostatic union stuff. The anthropic person. And, see, I know some big words. <laughs> is that impressive? <laughs> well, I know some little words too. <laughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Are you a new creature? How'd you get to be a new creature? You got saved. Amen. Uh, you, you let Jesus die in your place. You believe that. And you believe they buried him. 
and you believe he came out of the grave, and now you believe, well, since Jesus could get himself out of the grave, he can get me out. Or otherwise, I ask you this, are you going to live forever? Yes, sir. In this body, in this life? Uh, now, see, I qualified it. <laughs> see, Manny jumped the gun on me. But a Christian will live forever, but a lost person won't. They'll live forever different way. in hell. Different way. Well, not actually hell, the lake of fire. So I said, is there a difference in hell and the lake of fire? <laughs> we'll study that and let me know. <laughs> Amen. I'll tell you where you can find it, the book of Revelation. <coughs> Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Well, see, you're a new creature when you get saved. Now, you had an old nature, you're born with it, but when you got saved, you got a new nature, then the battle starts. Mm -hmm. And every Sunday morning, the old nature says, oh, you're tired, you got to stay in bed, you don't want to go to church. And a new nature said, no, Jesus died for you. You ought to love him and get up and go to church. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's correct. Can God do that? Mm -hmm. Well, what should you do? Well, if you're a new creature, you ought to be feeding the new nature and not feeding the old nature because if you feed the old nature more than you feed the new nature, which going to win? That's if you right. spend too much time watching TV and you get your thoughts off the TV, Maybe I'll spend some time reading your Bible and see how Christ thinks. Amen. And you can have the mind of Christ. Verse 18, And all things are of God uh, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God the Father reconciled us. He made us right with himself by sending Jesus to die to pay for our sins. And that's how we got reconciled. Otherwise, there'd still be something between us and God. <coughs> Ways of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through what? Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus died in your place. And if you'll trust Jesus, you can get right with God. If you reject Christ, you're not ever going to be right with God. Of course, you're rejecting God when you reject Christ because Jesus is God. He was God in flesh. Now, if we want to get into studying the Trinity, we'd be here a long time. And we never figure it all out. We just need to do it by faith because the Bible teaches it. I can't understand how the light's working either, but they are. I go over there and flip the switch. I believe they'll come on. Amen. So I flip the switch. If I didn't believe they'd come on, I wouldn't flip the switch. That's it. Or I wouldn't send Carol over there to flip it. <laughs> it's kind of tied up the aisle there, and she can fit in there better than I can. So see, she helps us have services. What are you doing to help us have services? Well, nothing else. You can be here. Amen. Or if you can't be here, you can pray. Amen. You can do something. Amen. Just do what you can. Amen. Do what you can. And uh, I, I got a bunch of other stuff I could uh, give to you this morning, but I'm going to get a little shorter. You just give your best. Not somebody else's best, just your best. I got a story, and that's kind of silly, but what, what if a, uh, could a Banny hen lay an ostrich egg? No, I don't think so. No. Banny hen's a little baby. Yeah. Ostriches. Big yeah. egg, right? Well, if she tried, if a little hen tried to lay an ostrich egg, she'd probably have to be psychoanalyzed if she couldn't get it done. And if she did, she'd probably have to have major surgery. <laughs> but what if the uh, rooster's out and he find, he runs up on an ostrich egg? And he rolls it over to the hen house. They, he can't get it in the hen house because it's so big. And he can barely. And he rolls it over there and, and he says, uh, Girls? And all the hens come out and he shows them this ostrich egg. He said that, uh, you know, he says, I, I just want you to know what they're doing in other places. <laughs> we don't need to worry about what they're doing in other places. We need to worry about doing something in our place. Amen. Isn't that right? Yeah. 
and you'll just frustrate yourself trying to do something you can't do. But you could, even if you couldn't walk up to somebody and tell them about Jesus, maybe you could go to a restaurant and lay a track down on the table. Amen. Or if you knew somebody that wasn't saved, could you pray for them to get reconciled? To be right with God? And I was going to read a little bit farther down in this 2 Corinthians chapter 6, a few verses here I want to mention, point out to you. Verse 19, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. God used Jesus to reconcile the world unto Himself, God the Father. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now what's that telling you? What's that mean he gave us? He committed to us. If God was trying to get the world right, now he wants us to try to help get the world right. And they, all, they're going on about all these shootings and all this stuff. It's not the guns doing it, it's wicked hearts. If we could get people's hearts right and right with God, we'd probably have a lot less shootings. But you won't hear them say, well, go to church. Well, we're not going to put prayer back in the schools. We're not going to open the mental institutions back up because there's something wrong in their minds. But it starts in the mind and gets down the heart. Well, Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus say, said, uh, if you hate somebody, you commit a murder in your heart. That is correct. If you lust after somebody, you committed adultery in your heart. Well, it starts in the heart. Well, really, it's in the mind and goes to the heart. But then if you let it stay in your heart, it's going to happen. You get to thinking about it, and letting it stay in your heart and after a while you'll be doing it. Verse 20, Now when we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you uh, by us, we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. You know you're an ambassador? Amen. What's an ambassador? Well, it's somebody that goes from some foreign country and comes here in America and they have an embassy and that embassy in America is like if say they're an ambassador for Russia in that embassy like it's like a little Russia That's well your home down here Christian could be an embassy for God Amen. could God live in your home uh -huh. well and then you could even bring it down closer he's in you Amen. personally and so you ought to be representing God in this world. People will watch how you act and do. There's a couple of fellas I want to mention that they've inspired. Anybody ever had heard of David Bernard? He was a missionary to the American Indians. He died at 29 years old. He had tuberculosis. They had it a lot back then. They used to have institutions they put people in that got TB because they didn't want to spread them. But anyway, he would ride on his horse and he'd get the coffin and he was spitting up blood because all in his lungs. And he'd fall off the horse and lay in the snow. And if he could, he'd pray. He was conscious, but maybe he couldn't get up. After a while, he'd get up and go again. And they say one 130 Native Americans doing that. Then he wrote his biography about it, and other people read it and it inspired them. Inspired a guy named Patton. And Patton was known for praying. And, uh, and he also inspired a guy named Kerry. Anybody know who Kerry was? He's the father of modern missions. Went to India. He, he said, he got a map out, he was over in England and he says, I think God needs a missionaries in India. And one of the deacons in the church said, down, said, sit down and be quiet. If God wants a missionary in India, he'll somehow take care of it. But Kerry didn't sit down and get, he was a shoe cobbler. That's what he did for a living at the time. 
He went to India. And won people to the Lord in India. But then Patton read, uh, Carrie read and was inspired by uh, Bernard, the missionary of the American Indian. Patton was too. They say Patton prayed so much that there were grooves in the floor from his knees. And so I thought, oh, that take an awful lot of praying. You know what they call James, the half-brother of Jesus? Camel knees. Because he was on his knees praying so much. Nowadays, we don't, well, we barely will bow our head or take our hat off to reverence God, let alone get down on our knees. I know some preachers lay flat on the floor on their face and pray. But the but how your body is isn't a thing, is your heart right? Yeah. Your heart needs to be right this morning. Are you saved? Do you believe you'd go to heaven if you were to die? You can know it this morning, first John five thirteen. Somebody said, How do I know it? Read in the Bible. We'll show it to you. If you want to know, we'll have somebody show you how to do that. Or if you are saved, are you doing your best for God? There it is. Are you, would you anoint Jesus? <clears throat> right. If nothing else, you could pray. Amen. Thank the Lord that He sent His only begotten Son that He loved. And the Father had to turn His back on Jesus hanging on the cross because He had your sins on Him. And it got dark for three hours. An earthquake... And then, you know, after Jesus rose from the dead, there were people coming out of the graves walking around witnessing. You witnessed anybody? I'm sure people laugh at us when we go up on the square. Some of them give me obscene hand gestures. <laughs> but then some of them, they're happy that we're up there. First time you're number one. And I really think, and I really think, there's more people for us than against us still in America. But we need to get more people on God's side. Amen. Because America is sliding down. It is. We're backsliding. And if you we read the Old Testament, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, some of those Old Testament, what happened to Israel when they got away from God and got into idols? You know what the big idols in America are today? Right. Fun, pleasure, and money. Money. And if those come before God, then that's your idol. Let's all stand. Let's turn page 17. Page 17.